Good morning, Ron. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you? It's uh, it's a great day for politics in West Virginia. That's all I can say. And unfortunately, the governor is probably going to lose some property here very shortly. <laughs> that's that's like a weekly occurrence, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it seems it seems as though it is. I'm I'm not sure that he's not got some experience in this and uh, doesn't take it nearly as uh, as hard as some of us might. Uh, you can catch Ron's thoughts on WVStatewide.com. What property is uh, getting confiscated this week, Ron? Well, the Sporting Club, of course, is the one that's going to be at, being, being talked about uh, as being auctioned by the uh, Carter Bank there in, uh, in the edge of Virginia, uh, the bank that um, Governor Justice, Jim Justice, was a uh, – a great friend of the uh, uh, one of the founders and and one of the movers and shakers in the Carter Bank, and apparently got some uh, some great deals over the years as far as uh, borrowing money and that sort of thing. I'm not sure why the uh, why the U.S. Attorney uh, in New York State hasn't looked at that because apparently you can't uh, you can't fudge on finances in New York State, but uh, nevertheless the uh, Justice family certainly benefited from friendships that uh, the governor's had with lots of people, including President Trump. And uh, so it looks as though they may have benefited from the bank, but now the bank wants its money because the uh, people who were there when the great sweetheart deals were worked are no longer either there or alive. And uh, therefore, it's, it's created a few problems for the governor. But one thing we all know is regardless of whether he pays his bills, pays his taxes, or pays anything else, his popularity remains at about 60%, and Baby Dog stays at about 65 <laughs> Who are the two-thirds that don't like Baby Dog? <laughs> it's a dog. Come on, the dog didn't do it. Yeah, we're trying to do some research on that. Yeah, yeah the dog... The dog wants to uh, keeps wanting to run around the state closed and highways to dedicate them. I and understand. I think, that's, I think that's upsetting a few few voters. Well, uh, before you go, Bill, just yeah. uh, quickly, Ron, there is a theory out there that yeah. uh, Governor Justice's desire to be a U.S. senator is his belief yeah. that if he's elected to the Senate, it will delay or perhaps squash any additional prosecution of him in regards to some of the financial situations that he or his family or both have gotten into. Do you, have you heard this? Oh, yeah. That's, that's of course, one of the rumors. I, um, as we all will know, those of us, the crew here and, and others who've been involved in politics know that there's always rumors about lots of things. That's certainly a possibility. There's no question that uh, uh, they would have a tougher time. Look at the uh, esteemed senator from New Jersey who has done almost anything he wants to and is still in the Senate and hasn't been removed and nothing's happened to him. And and there's others. Uh, you know, the, there were the very serious questions uh, about uh, Congress, our Congressman Mooney uh, and his expenditure of uh, campaign funds for Chick-fil-A uh, sandwiches and and so forth supposed to be they were supposed to be hot on the trail of Congressman Mooney what uh, three four five years ago and absolutely nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether or not Jim Justice would would try to parlay being a senator into helping his financial condition, I have no idea. But I, as I said before. And we'll say over and over that voters don't seem to care about that anyway. Yeah. Good morning, Ron. Bill Stubblefield. Uh, let's try to frame out or put some uh, dimension upon the uh, justice's financial problems. It's my understanding he owes three hundred million plus to Carter Banks. Uh, the the sporting club is one that's going to be in question that may be repossessed. You didn't co-sign for him, did you? <laughs> no, I did not. No, that that was no. his wife and his family. Thank goodness I did not. Yeah. Bills of the no. means where that would just be a little cash disbursement <laughs> exactly. for him. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but also the, the the helicopter was was an issue. But besides right. the helicopter and the sporting club, how far, how much farther will this, will this extend? Will it ever get to the Greenbrier itself? Well, there there are plenty of people who I value their financial judgment. Now, most of those have very little experience or uh, any any idea of how politics actually works from the inner inside out. But most of the financial people that I know have have been telling me for uh, at least three years, probably four, that there's, they have looked at the financial condition of the, of the justice family and the governor and that there's no way that he can escape being absolutely uh, devastated financially by the, uh, and again, it goes back to things like my question to you, which obviously was a joke, but um, if, whether or not he, he has personally signed on notes at banks, that's something that uh, probably, again, back to us, but my lawyer and your lawyer would probably be very hesitant to have us going into banks signing personal debts uh, in, in our names uh, if, if in fact, uh, we could get the money any other or, you know, the funding any other way. Now, maybe they have operated as a coal company, uh, you know, they operated several coal enterprises around the state and Kentucky and, uh, and Virginia. Uh, but uh, maybe they uh, can figure out a way to escape it. Uh, some of those people who I'm talking about who told me three years ago that the governor was going to be destitute, they predicted he would, he would actually live in the governor's mansion. It's what a, what a strange feeling because that would be the only place he'd have to live. Uh, but uh, that uh, has not happened yet. And I, I've got serious doubts in the political climate that we all know about that it's going to happen. But I think under normal circumstances, and what's great about this governor, and I will concede it every day, and I don't want anybody either to think that I dislike Jim Justice. Jim Justice is a lovable character. I keep calling him, as you know, Mr. Haney uh, from Green Acres. He reminds me of him. He's got a deal to work anywhere, anytime. He's got an explanation for anything that goes wrong. And uh, and, it, and they're always pretty good explanations. I, if you really check them out, sometimes they don't work exactly the way he says they do. But But he's very good at talking, and he's very good at getting on the level – I've seen him go into uh, of the audience. I have seen him go you know, from the Greenbrier uh, to Gilbert, West Virginia, and Mingo County. And he can communicate as well in, in Mingo as he can in uh, uh, and at the Greenbrier. And it kind of reminds me of the old, of an old saying by all of our friends, I'm sure, a. James, the late A. James Mansion. When he was Secretary of State or Treasurer One, he said a great politician has to be as happy in the choir loft as they are in the in the cat house. Yeah, Let me and go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think that um, maybe Governor Justice. I'm not going to accuse him of. Uh, I don't want Kathy after him, so I don't want to accuse him of being at the cat house. But <laughs> but I think he would be as comfortable either place too. Let, let me go back to my question, if I can. Do you see this extending? Pa- uh, how far past the sporting club, uh, the right. financial? Do you th- have you heard anything that's going to extend to the uh, the Greenbrier itself or other holdings, or is it going to be limited uh, just to the sporting club? Well, again, the people who uh, who have told me about this for going on three, four, five years now insist that the Greenbrier is next and that it is going to happen very, very shortly. Um, I don't know. Uh, most of the ones that have told me that uh, normally are correct about things and know what's going on. But, again, I will caution that they're, most of them, the ones talking to me, 
are experts in finance. I would consider them experts in finance, but not experts in politics. So I don't know if there's some way, somehow, that politics can slow this process down. There probably is. Politics can slow anything down. Uh, so probably is, but I think, I think it's, I think we'll know, um, by the time the, uh, U.S. Senate race reaches November, we'll know where that's headed at the very least. Right, good morning, Ron. This is John Gilstrap. Was this situation created organically in the sense that Governor Justice had financial issues and stopped paying his loans, or was the situation forced because the bank, with Carter Bank, whatever, I guess that's what it's called, because they changed the sweetheart term that, that, that he had, and that, that forced him into difficulty paying? The older guy died. Well, he died, but... Yeah, but and the, then the, younger, the son did not get the sweetheart deal. But the sweetheart deals existed already, right? But they started find. I started calling them. So they yeah, started so, calling the yeah, loans. So yeah, it's it's the the issue is created by calling loans that were made in good faith, albeit perhaps on on preferred right, terms. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Well, and I think it's a combination of both. I think that, uh, uh, and that's a almost a cop out answer, but I I still think that's true. I think we're in a different age and a different uh, conditions and. You know, there was there was a time I, I was uh, assistant mayor of Charleston, for example, and uh, a friend of, of mine and the mayor, Kent Melton, uh, was sitting in my office one day, and he said uh, that he was headed to a board meeting, one of the one of the big Charleston banks, and he said, uh, and as he got up to leave and had nothing to do with the bank. Uh, he just looked at me and said, is there, is there anything you need, anything I can do for you? And I said, well, you can pick me up $5,000 while you're over to bank. And I, I promise you this, within an hour, he came back with an envelope with $5,000 in it and a note for me to sign. But that happened in an hour. And I, I, I didn't, I used the money to pay off some debts, but uh, you Tell me where you could do that today. It's a completely different situation. You're not going to walk into your friendly neighborhood bank and walk back out with $5,000 just because on your word you said you'd pay it back. Well, you know, I, in my experience, the opposite is true. And this goes back 20 or 30 years, and maybe that, that, that's, that's the point. But a very good friend of mine was a banker, and we, were, we had some issues, and he knew I was good for it. And, and and we got we got the loan. We paid it off in in a hurry. So I, I I don't know. It feels like that kind of thing goes on all the time. Does it not, or is it just it just is the spigot shut off for that? Ron, before you and kind of extend that, are there other banks involved besides Carter Bank? I've not heard about any other bank involved. Um, I, there there may be, but that's that's the only one I've heard. Let's shift gears. Earlier this week in Raleigh County, the four candidates for governor, uh, Moore, Morrissey, Mack, and Miller, all got together and decided that they would talk politics. And uh, as, as that uh, debate emerged, the uh, reviews that I got said that uh, Mack Warner was basically the guy who came out as the education uh, candidate. Did you feel like any of the other candidates aligned themselves with any particular category of what needed to be done in the state? other than all of them uh, doing their best to extol their own conservative bona fides and Trump allegiance? Yeah, if you can find how close you are to Trump, that's that's the important thing. <laughs> oh, I think more Capito spoke uh, uh, very wisely about uh, the financial condition of the state. Uh, I think that he distinguished himself in that regard. Um, the uh, thing that I keep cautioning and a few other Riders around the state of the legislature, the happy Republican, liberty loving majority, uh, Republican legislature, super majority, uh, who wants to chop taxes, who wants to do all sorts of things, uh, that there should be a little caution involved because you've got all that COVID money, you've got who knows. Uh, the, the financial, again, back to the governor, the financial wizard who seems to be able to create finances out of the dust 
uh, we're, we're concerned about that, and I think more capita captured that concern. I'm not sure um, the average citizen out in the home obviously likes the tax cuts that have taken place, the tax cuts that the governor is recommending, and they don't, they don't look at where we may be sitting five years from now. Everybody I trust in government finance says we're going to be in terrible shape, but I guess we'll see. Incidentally, I, I don't want us to, uh, to to get get too involved in these minute issues that are not as important as Cheryl Kump's fight with Craig Blair. Can I bring that up? Can we talk about the covering the parking meters of handicapped at the Capitol? What? That is the burning issue around the state. I, I've not heard of this, but will you tell me this again. Mrs. Kump, who is, of course, the wife of Delegate Larry Kump, who was a great, 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 great grandson of the late Governor Guy Kump, uh, is very devoted, and, and she is wonderful, wonderful lady, absolutely fantastic lady, and very devoted to her husband, very devoted to the state, very devoted to her marriage. Every once in a while, drives the uh, nearly five hours to Charleston to visit the legislature. And uh, she did that uh, uh, last week. And uh, when she arrived, she has a handicap sticker, uh, has had an illness uh, that everybody, she's kind of chronicled for everybody on social media. Everybody knows that there's no doubt she has an illness, has a handicap sticker. And when she got to the Capitol building itself, and was going to park on the handicapped parking lot, every meter on that parking lot was bagged, which they're calling their bag, it's you know, like a bank bag sort of thing, a uh, cloth bag, put over the, every meter saying they were reserved for the state senate. Uh, that triggered Mrs. Combs, and she has not been happy. In fact, she has... Uh, described herself as furious. She's made several uh, uh, postings on social media about Senate President Blair having no concern about handicapped people and blocking that parking lot. And the senator himself says that he didn't start to practice, and he did not. I, uh, I, will, I will defend him on that uh, accusation because I know they've been doing that for years, and I guess it's First time Mrs. Kump uh, got there when they were actually bagged, but it's uh, it's an ongoing controversy, and she's challenged uh, Senator Blair to meet her out in the hallway and then discuss it. And uh, he says Roger Hanshaw, the Speaker of the House, has indicated he's totally on her side and will defend her and the right of. And and I think we'd all agree that there should be handicap. If 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 a handicapped person got to that Capitol. And there was no way at all to get inside uh, and find a place to park. Then I think we're all sympathetic. Well, I'll do respect on this topic, Ron. I think this pales in comparison to who the next governor of the state's going to be, though. Oh, really? Well, I did. Well, okay. Well, maybe I'm <laughs> this, maybe I this, 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 long enough to know. This, um, this sounds more like it's a, it's a little squabble <laughs> that could be settled by unbagging a couple of meters and getting the police to do their job. Well, I thought that would provide something for you all to talk about all next week. Um, and you might bring in par several parties that that would want to testify. You never know. I, I could do the trial about it here, I guess. I don't know. I, I do. I know Cheryl Kump uh, through Larry. Uh, she's a wonderful lady. Uh, I, I like the Kumps. They're, they're good folks. Um, I had no idea that this parking squabble was going on. I'm. I'm uh, completely in favor of those who need to use the handicapped parking spaces and have the appropriate stickers being allowed to use them. That being said, that being well, I have said, no idea no, what the tradition is in Charleston in terms of bagging those. I, have, I don't have a clue what that's about. But the parking they, stickers they, have been they abused. They were bagged long before Earl Ray even was Senate president. They did it uh, claiming that you know, they did one thing she pointed out, which is true. Each senator has during any time of the year, has a parking space uh, on the boulevard there and the, on Greenbrier Street, just very close to the Capitol. And 
extra important people who need spaces even better than that so that parking lot is, is arguably a little closer for some people. Uh, I have a few but comments. The has a parking spot. They just don't use it. Summer Barrett says there are other handicapped spaces available. Uh, Jackie Long said that has occurred for years, too. So, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what the story is. I'm completely unfamiliar with the... There? Yeah, can you hear me still, Ron? Did we lose you? I guess we lost Ron. All right, well, regardless. Uh, I wanted to get more out of him about the uh, governor's uh, debate in Raleigh County because, you know, parking squabbles can be settled <laughs> without a whole lot of uh, involvement of the Senate president, I would presume. But the governor's debate earlier this week, Bill, uh, that's uh, really where the focus needs to be right now about serious issues in this state. It really does. Uh, I did not listen to the debate. I wish I had. Uh, I'm having a hard time getting consensus of who won and mm-hmm. did not win. Generally, people are very free in expressing their opinion. I've heard less so this time than than previous debates. We will do a candidate forum. We're shooting for, I believe it's April 16 and 17. Uh, This year, early voting begins May 1 and runs through May 11. The primary is May the 14th. So we always try to do these before the early voting begins. We wanted to get a little bit closer, but the rooms weren't available. So we're we're settling on that uh, mid-April range there right after tax day is done, the 16th and 17th. Uh, Did did Ron get back to us there? Very good. Colin says he's back on the line now. Ron, are you back with us? No, Sadie. You you were on right back with us. Are you there? Yeah, I'm like I'm here. Um, okay, I got I have about two minutes left before we run out of time in this segment. Uh, you, well, that's, not, that's not time enough to cover Cheryl Cump and the. And <laughs> All right. uh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll play. I'll play the game. Your your. Uh, I want to go back to the four candidates for governor who I met earlier this week in Raleigh County, and if you could tell me what's the buzz around Charleston in terms of who they think right now is the person who is in the lead. It is my belief, which. Uh, coincides with most of the people I know and I, I think we're accurate is that more Capito is the leader uh, that more uh, Patrick Morrissey is next and uh, probably um, uh, Mac Warner is third uh, Chris Miller who we all had thought would spend a tremendous amount of money uh, a year ago and his name on the hasn't done all that much. I think it's fairly close. I, I would predict that, that uh, Capito will win, but I think anybody could at this, at this stage of the game. And it will set up, uh, because of the acrimony, and there and in many of the individual counties, there are just simply two groups of Republican voters who are on two are on different sides of all kinds of issues, including whether the primary is open or closed, and, and things we've all talked about. I think that uh, I think that acrimony could cause uh, Huntington Mayor uh, Steve, uh, the the mayor of Huntington, Steve Williams, Steve, Steve Williams, yeah. could cause him uh, give him the opportunity to maybe be a Democrat governor in West Virginia, and I, and I think there are other Democrats. That, that it's possible that they could enter one of those races. I, we didn't get to talk about my friend, and he, and he genuinely is Don Blankenship, uh, who I think uh, is, is kind of strange that he's running as a Democrat, but he'll make he'll make for fun in that U.S. Senate race. Oh, he got a lot of attention, that's for sure, with some of the things that he said. Uh, but we can uh, we can make Don the center of the next conversation. Ron, I appreciate your time this morning. Tell our audience where they can find out more about how uh, and where you write. WVStatewide.com, and it's Ron Gregory, Gregory's Web. We started that name years ago. It's a takeoff on Charlotte's Web, and the saying back then that was papers printed with the word Gregory with words Gregory's Web was don't get caught in Gregory's web. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying not to catch Cheryl, Cheryl in that, but uh, too late. it's dangerous. <laughs> too late. Ron, thank you, man. Have a great day.